As my brother said, happy Sabbath to everybody. Coming out here on the Lord's Sabbath day to get one more opportunity to get it right. Well, today, well, first I'd like to uh, invite any and everybody that wants to come out to the house of Israel, Israel to worship with us at 1604 East Overthorpe Boulevard at my barbershop. So we meet every Sabbath or every Saturday at 1 o'clock. So let's get to the meat of the matter. The title of the message is Stop Killing Our Children. Stop Killing Our Children. And the reason why I titled this message this, not because of what's going on in the world today with police brutality, or you got police killing people. We'll deal with that another time. The problem that we are having today is abortion. Mm -hmm. Abortion. If you don't know what abortion is, that's when a woman goes to a doctor and kills her child that's in her womb. Ooh, ooh. And it's a really, really big, big thing that majority of the churches are solid about. I want to bring this home because this hurts God's people more so than people are, well, put like this, this hurts God's people in dealing with him. And people really do not think that they are murdering children. Mm -hmm. Because they haven't seen the baby come out of the womb. Mm -hmm. It's a baby in there. And we got to deal with this because it's a great tragedy, it's a great evil that's upon this land that most of the world do not even bother to talk about. Churches in general. Mm -hmm. And it's so easy, not just talking about adult women to get abortion, it's easy for teenagers to get abortions. And I got some stats that I'm going to read for you so you can understand that this is a great murder all over the earth. And we got some stats, worldwide stats. I'm going to have my brother to read it. Go ahead, brother. Induced abortion worldwide, global incidents and trends. During 2010 through 2014, an estimated 56 million induced abortion occurred each year worldwide. Within four years, 56 million kids are killed every year. Go ahead. This number represents an increase from 50 million annually during 1990 through 1994, mainly because of population growth. Yes, sir. As of 2010 through 2014, the global annual rate of abortion for all women of reproductive age 15 through 44 is estimated to be 35 percent, 35 per 1,000, which is a reduction from the 1990 through 1994 rate of 40 per 1,000. Wow. The, the estimated global abortion rates as of 2010 through 2014 is 35%, 35 per 1,000 for married women and 26 per 1,000 for unmarried women. So abortion rate, 30%. And married women and 20%, 26% within people who are single are having abortions every year. Wow. Go ahead. Now we're going to get to the point of a, about kids, about children. Some children can get an abortion without even the, the consent of their parents. Right. Go ahead, brother. Parental consent and notification laws. If you're under 18, you may or may not have to tell a parent in order to get an abortion. It all depends on the laws where you live. Mm -hmm. 
some states don't have any laws about telling your parents and getting their permission, but some states say you have to get permission from a parent or uh, older, no parental involvement requirement. Now these are some of the states right. about their parental rights, meaning that what, who can get an abortion and when and how and what ages. Okay, the, the first state is Florida. Mm -hmm. Your state requires that one of your parents be told of your decision 48 hours before your abortion. Uh -huh. A judge can excuse you from this requirement. It's saying that 48 hours you're supposed to have one parent to consent with that. But if you get a judge as a teenager, you ain't got to tell them nothing. You can go straight to the doctor and get an abortion without your parents even knowing. Wow. This evil act. In this world, in this Babylonian system, or this European system, allows people to kill children legally. Go ahead. Now the next state is our state, Georgia. Georgia says your state requires that one of your parents be told of your decision 24 hours before your abortion. Mm -hmm. A judge can excuse you from this requirement. How are you? No parental involvement required. In Hawaii, you ain't got to have no parents. You just go down there and get it done as long as you got the money. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. New Jersey is the same way. No parental involvement required. Mm -hmm. New Mexico, the same way. No, no parental involvement requirement. New York, no parental involvement, involvement required. Yes, North Carolina, your state requires that one of your parents or a grandparent with whom you have lived for at least six months immediately preceding the abortion give permission for your abortion. A judge can excuse you from this requirement. So you can be dealing with them with your legal guardian for six months and they'll say, okay, you can get an abortion, go ahead. So simple, so easy. I just want y'all to really realize what's going on. And the world is silent. Where people like this. The churches are silent with this. By a show of hand, raise your hand, you ever heard a minister come and preach about abortion? Zero hands in here. Because they're scared. Because they know they have okayed some of the abortion. Mm. Go ahead, child. God will forgive you. I ain't saying you won't forgive you, but you got to pay once we find out in this lesson. You got to pay. Everybody got to pay. Whatever you sow, you're going to reap. Period. Go ahead. You may be able to get a judge's permission to have an abortion without telling your parents. This is called judicial bypass. The exact rules are different in different places. Then it says, find information on parental involvement in your state. I just want to give y'all some stats to understand what's going on. And you got young women out here who, who are fornicating. You got young men who out here who are fornicating, and this stuff occurs because of fornication a lot of times. Don't get it twisted, man. We're not leaving out the men either. We're going to deal with them. They're just as much a part of it as the women. It ain't just about no women thinking about abortion. Men do the same thing. Go and get rid of it, man. You know I'm married. Go and get rid of it. This stuff is a great evil in the land, and the world is silent. I put it like that the churches are silent. They don't want to talk about it. Because they know. Some of the pastors know about some of the people who got a voice. But the story got to be told. Let's get into it. Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 16. God hates abortion. He hates it. He hates it. And don't get me wrong, this is not telling you you cannot get, be forgiven. You can be forgiven for any sin. Any sin, as long as you sin, but blasphemous against the Holy Spirit. Put it like that. But you got to pay, I got to pay if I take part in these sins, period. I just hope God don't come down on me just as well as you as hard. He hates this. Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 16. Go ahead. These six things doeth the Lord hate. Yes, sir. Yea. Seven are an abomination unto him. Wait a minute, LC. They told me that God don't hate nobody. That's right. They said. 
What did the book say? Just say. God said, I hate you. Come on. No, Jeff, you're reading that wrong. No, you just can't read. Go ahead. 17. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood. We talking about them hands that shed innocent blood. We did it with abortion. We did it with this nice subject entitled about abortion. What is more innocent than an innocent baby in your bed? What more innocent? Come on. And you got so many different types of ways of abortion. These women would take a pill. They got pills out here you can buy in the store to abort a baby. They got stuff that even to come from my from back in the 70s where they used to use coat hangers. They use vacuums. I wanted, I wanted to bring some video but I said, no, that might be gruesome. I think I can talk this through. <laughs> but the thing is, I want to make sure you understand that this is not no laughing matter. This is a very serious issue. He said, hands that shed innocent blood. Wow. God hates that. There's nothing more innocent than an unborn baby, than a baby, period. And some of them let them get born and kill them. Understand that. We're dealing with abortion today. The title is Stop Killing Our Children. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 28. All of this is written in the law. But these preachers will not go with it. And we got young ladies growing up here thinking that they got a choice and nothing. They got a choice. Thinking that you got a choice and nothing gonna happen. You got one young men here thinking like, well, okay, I ain't gotta pay child support, go on ahead and do it. Right. Right, that's right. And it's crazy because I remember a time, a long time ago, this dude named Ray Peru, an NFL ball player, who wanted his girlfriend to give her an abortion. But she would. So he had a kill. But God fixed him. He thought he could get away with it, how a murderer. But a murderer told on him he got life in prison. Mm. And the kid is still born, and he still got to pay while he in prison. Wow. So he fixed that. Well, this is a great evil in the land, y'all. We just got to deal with it. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 45. These are the curses right there. It's a part of the curse. Verse 45, go ahead. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed. He said, all these curses, if you break the laws of God, the problem, if you break the laws of God, the problem is, you're going to have them curses overtake you and follow you. It's going to happen. And those curses will affect Israel seven times more than all the other nations. Hmm. Let's look at something. Let's jump down to verse 54. You finished with that? No, we were. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start off. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue suit thee and overtake thee, yes, sir. till thou be destroyed, because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to keep his commandments and his statutes, which he commanded thee. What do you mean, Jeff? He, she just avoided the baby? What commandment? He, they break it. Murder. Kill. Thou shalt not kill. And don't get me wrong, I'm telling you, this is not a personal attack on anybody that had an abortion. I just want to make sure that we stop this in our church. So they'll know, when you're going out there fornicating, you just might get pregnant. Huh. And you're going out there, you even, even you cheating on your wife or you cheating on your husband, you just might get somebody pregnant or she might get pregnant. Then all of a sudden now you're like, oh man, oh, they go ahead and clean this up. My husband coming back and I ain't been with him. What's that, you right? The king? And when King David slept with Bathsheba, yeah. he was out for war, he was coming back, he was like, go ahead down there and sleep with him. He wouldn't sleep with his wife, uh, what was her name? Bathsheba. Bathsheba. Yeah. He wouldn't sleep with her, so he had to find a way and kill Uriah. He didn't abort the baby, but God did with him and the baby. This is what going on. Jump down to verse 54. Go ahead. 
So that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eyes shall be evil toward his brother. Yes, sir. And toward the wife of his bosom. Uh -huh. And toward the remnant of his children, which he shall leave. He, he talking about the man being evil towards his wife. You evil man if you tell your wife to get an abortion. Hmm. You evil if you if you do that to your unborn kid. The wife of your brother, even your brother, some of them go out and have children with their brother's wife and try to hide. All of this covered in there. You just got to have somebody to bring it out. Bring it out. Go ahead. 55. So that he will not give to any of them of the flesh of his children whom she, he, he shall eat. He don't want to give nothing to that man. Go on, give rid of that child, man. I ain't got time to pay a child support. I got five kids over here. I can't stand no more. Go ahead. Because he has nothing left in him in him in the siege and in the straightness wherewith thy enemies thy enemies shall distress thee in all thy gates. He said thy enemies shall distress you in all your gates, meaning that you're gonna be lowly paid while we over here in the land of our captivity. You ain't gonna be able to take care of all them kids and live. So what's the next step? Get rid of it. Get rid of it. This is we distressed of all this land. Everywhere we go, Israel is distressed. Come on, baby. Thank you, we got to understand this. This is a very serious matter that we got to understand. Men, you got to teach your young daughters not to be whores. Women, you got to teach your young daughters not to be whores. And also the men, you got to teach your son not to be whores. It ain't left out. Go ahead. 56. The tender and delicate woman among you, which would not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness. So we're dealing with the women. Go ahead. Her eyes shall be evil toward the husband of her bosom, and toward her son, and toward her daughter. I know he loved his child. He wanted his child real bad. But since he pissed me off, I'm going to go on the border. I'm going to go ahead and get the child killed. He loved me. Or, or being evil toward the husband, I've been sleeping around with somebody, now he's coming home. I got to get rid of him. That's right. I got to get rid of him. He wasn't here to sleep with me, so I can't say it here, baby. Evil. This is evil. If it bypasses you, the understanding of this, that's on you. I'm going to bring it out. Go ahead. And toward her young one that cometh out from between her feet. Talking about the baby once she had her young one. This is how she feel about the babies coming out. Go ahead. And toward her children which she shall bear. Mm -hmm. For she shall eat them for one of all things secretly in the seed and straightness. Wherewith thy enemy shall distress thee in thy gates. And you and the women, you and your enemy's land, especially Hebrew women. You ain't gonna get paid as much as everybody else. So you saying to yourself, I'm already struggling now. I can't have another kid and have my life. So I got to get rid of it. Understand that. This is what goes on. That's why I had to read those stats to you. 54 million babies was aborted from 2010 to 2014, I think. And it goes on every day. Every day. Folks, man, this ain't got nothing to do with me. I ain't the boy. When somebody come up at the top of you as Israel and you don't tell them what the right thing to do, you tell them the wrong thing to keep your mouth shut, that blood is on your hand. That blood is on your hand. Go ahead. If thou would not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, if you won't listen to this law that's written in this book that's been read by me and this brother, What's going to happen? Go ahead. That thou mayest fear this glorious and fearful name. You got to fear that this stuff don't come to pass. It's written. It can't be changed. Go ahead. The Lord thy God. Go ahead. Then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful. Now this is what God said he going to do to us. He said, I'm going to make these plagues wonderful. This wonderful in his eyes. We think about wonderful. Like, oh, it's going to be something that's Good, no. It's good that he punish us for doing this. 
Go ahead. And the plagues of thy seed. When he's talking about plagues, he's talking about diseases. Diseases of the seed, meaning your children. You see a lot of children being born with all kinds of diseases. Hmm. From sickle cell, from AIDS, from all this stuff that previously been done, what previously your sins, what you've done before you had that. Oh, I want that right now. His daddy right here, he got good money, he got good chicken. I want him, but then the baby come out sick and you got to use all your money to keep it, the baby living. Hmm. This is what it is right here. When it comes back on, God don't forget nothing. We just did a little abortion topic today. This happened in all the sins. Go ahead. Then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful, and the plagues of thy seed even great plagues, and of long continuance, sore sickness, and of long continuance. So you're going to be sickly a long time. You have a lot of people who deal with a lot of sickness because of what they have done previously. This is one part of it. You finish with that? Yes, sir. Let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 21. Here we go. The Exodus 21, excuse me. Exodus 21. We got to understand this, y'all. I'm going to make it plain so you will understand it. Ain't no thing where you say, well, I really don't understand how God see abortion. They should do this in the book. If you, if you share the innocent blood, what more innocent than an unborn child? Exodus chapter 21, and verse 21. See, God had a way of dealing with people who hurt women that have children inside their body and they make a miscarriage to lose their baby. This is what he say right here. Exodus 21, verse 22. Go ahead. Or 21. Go ahead. Notwithstanding, if he continue a day or two, he shall not be punished, for he is his money. Go ahead. If men strive and hurt a woman with child. He said, if men strive and hurt a woman with child, I mean an unborn baby inside of baby, and inside of bed. Go ahead. So that her fruit depart from her. So that she lose the baby, which is the fruit. And, Go ahead. And, and yet no mischief follow. Meaning that it was an accident. She accidentally got hurt. And no mischief meaning that I didn't try to do this. Go ahead. He shall be sure to punish. Even if you didn't try to do this, you still going to be punished. Go ahead. According as the women's husband will lay upon him, and he shall pay as the judges determine. So back in the day, this is how they handled it if you make this woman lose her baby. The woman's husband, he going to deal with you. Then if the woman's husband didn't want to deal with you, he take it to the judge. And then if the judge figure out that it was some mischief or some evil stuff you did to make that woman lose her baby, which is putting all these abortion clinics up, this is what they're doing now. I'm bringing it up to our time. Go ahead. This is what he said. 23. And if any mischief follow, meaning anything you done evil, you meant to do it. Go ahead. Then thou shalt give life for life. But then they just say, kill him. Kill him. Get life for life. And it's still going on today. But it ain't in Israel hand to kill people back to make a judgment like that no more. Because the priest that went wrong. Went wrong. So God said, I do the killing. I do the killing now. And people don't understand that. Man, the old such and such show died real quick. Look what he did in his previous years. God know everything. He see everything that we do. That's why I say, man, when I pray and ask God to forgive me, I understand the judgment, how he deal with his people who know. But this is where you find out a woman having an unborn child, when she lose the baby, she's, the man still got to be punished, whoever make her lose it. And then, if it's a mystery, they will get life for life. We finish with that? Yes, sir. Let's go to Jeremiah. Boy, Matthew. Matthew. Matthew 18. Matthew 18. 
verse 1. God hates it when you hurt and kill his innocent children. Matthew 18, verse 1. We deal with abortion. Like I said, if you encounter, if you've done something like this, repent. That's all you can do. Repent and ask God for forgiveness. And you see your heart, maybe you won't bring that judgment down on you too hard. And also, if you're a part of this, don't, don't, don't you think it's just a woman? The man is just much involved himself. But they thank God for God. I'm going to show you how God uh, did he forget. Matthew chapter 18, verse 1. Let's see how God feels about his children. Go ahead. At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? So they asked, Who the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Go ahead. And Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them. Go ahead. And said, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Jesus said, these children are great in my eyes. A lot of people just pay their children wrong like, you know, they ain't nothing. Talk over them. Go to the people who got money and give them the props. That's right. That's why I take the time with children. I understand. I don't get mad with the children. I get mad with the parents who raising them bad kids. <laughs> Period. But listen to what he say here. Go ahead. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Jesus said, if you take care of these little children, don't lead them astray, you are going to be great in the kingdom. That's why I take up time. I don't get mad at kids. I used to until I understood. It ain't their fault. It's these big old grown-ups who still acting like kids. Well, my mom didn't give me this, so I'm going to give it all to my kids. No, you spoil that kid. Treat him right. Raise him up in this book. But this is what I want to get to about how God feels about his kids. Go ahead. Who, uh, verse 6. Verse 6. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me? Who shall so murder one of these little ones? You can say murder, hurt, whatever you want to do. Kill them, whatever. Who you offend one of these little ones? Go ahead. Who believe in me? It were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depths of the sea. He said, put a stone around your neck and cast yourself in the sea. That's going to be easier to bear what I got for you. Mm -hmm. That's going to be easier to bear what I got for you. You aborted that child. You killed that child, man. You killed that child, woman. Stop killing our children. That's the title is. This is what God, this is how God sees his children. We got to understand that. That's my phone. Go ahead. Uh, let's go to uh, Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 1. Jeremiah 1 and verse 1. Or you haven't had your period yet, 
that you, uh, uh, what's, this is how women determine if they're pregnant or not. The period didn't come on. But a lot of women would say, okay, it, it, it didn't come on, so I go and board the baby. I go and get rid of it. Or take something to get rid of the baby. This is how they determine before they go and get a pregnancy test back then. Yeah. If they ain't got enough money. Mm -hmm. That period to come on, okay, I gotta do something about this. It ain't for the end.